Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yah. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel, you, yeah, dot net channel on the web. You can find us there on Yahoo and the Torah dot net. You can find us on Odyssey. You can find us also on Rumble. So much love and shout out to everybody out there who is family and we love you guys all. We love you dearly. And today is a preparation day. Yay! Oh, everybody's sick here, so they're they're, they're not much of my drummer. Yeah, I gave you drummer. All right, all right. Tomorrow Shabbat. Yay! All right, there we go. That's not too bad. So, all right. And um, thank you guys. So what today is is a preparation day. And what does in the world does that mean, boys? That means today we need to prepare everything that we're going to do for tomorrow. We need to cook today. We need to work today. Clean whatever we're going to do it needs to be done for tomorrow. Oh, you sound really clogged up, buddy. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm all right. How, how's your throat? Uh, it hurts. How, how are you doing, Kate? I'm fine. You look like you've been drugged through a knothole, friend. I'm fine. Are you all right? <laughs> Eli's just backing in after uh, having to blow snot out of the, the old tutor there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys are all doomed. The only one at this table here so far that isn't doomed. And Mom, who's in the kitchen, we, we, we survived this one so far. So hopefully we don't get plagued by you guys. But uh, we shall see what happens here. All right. And um, so are you guys ready to roll? Yep. Uh, I guess I'd do some more conversation, but you guys are just uh, kind of deathly ill looking. All right, here we go. We are in the second book of Adam and Kawa, and um, this is where it begins. And after the death of Adam and Kawa, I guess Kawa died as well, too. I didn't realize she died. But it, 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 she was still alive last chapter. Yeah, she was still alive. She must be dead now. I don't know when that is. But anyway, after the death of Adam and of Kawa, Sheth severed his children and his children's children from Cain's children. Cain and his seed went down and dwelt westward below the place where he had killed his brother Hevel. Okay, this is different because it's like when the days of Adam were here, he uh, Cain was already gone. He was he was long gone. He with his his uh, sister. So I'm not sure what exactly um, has dwelt, but we're talking about um, the end of Sheth is like uh, he he lived to be what 900 and something years old. And so Adam lived 900 and some years. So we're talking like nearly 2,000 years um, between the, two, the span of all this. And so there is a tremendous amount of people now. Um, in 2,000 years, I mean, you're looking, you know. Why don't it be like 2,000 years? It'd be more like, like 1,200. It'd be like eight, more 800 or something like that. What do you mean? Because Adam was like 100 years old when he gave birth to Sheth. He was, right, right, right. It's not like 2,000. Right, but we're about, you know, Masameno. I mean, we're, we're talking like more or less is, is we've we're got 2,000 years, 1,800 years, something of the sort. Um, a little lower than that, but um, you guys get my point, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. But Sheth and his children dwelt northwards upon the mountain of the cave of treasures in order to be near their father, Adam. And Sheth the elder, tall and good, with a fine soul and of a strong mind, stood at the head of his people and tended them in innocence, penitence, and meekness, and did not allow one of them to go down to Cain's children. But because of their own purity, they were named children of Elohim, and they were of Elohim, instead of the hosts of messengers who fell, for they continued in praises to Elohim and in singing psalms unto him in their cave of the tr cave of treasures. Then Sheth stood before the body of his father Adam and of his mother Kawa and prayed night and day and asked for mercy towards himself and his children and that when he had some difficult dealing with a child, he would give him counsel. But Sheth and his children did not like the earthly work, but gave themselves to shamily things for they had no other thought than praises, doxologies and psalms unto Elohim. That's interesting that Sheth is sitting there praying about uh, dealing with difficult children. Um, it seems like that's like every parent's prayer. Um, you guys, you guys know what that's going to be like when you guys get old. Maybe. Oh, Eli, why are you sighing? Are you guys? <laughs> are you a difficult child? I'm sure, I'm not, Dad. You're sure you're not. <laughs> uh, you guys are awesome kids. You guys are, are good kids. But when you guys get old and you guys have kids, then you will be praying, beseeching Elohim, also how to deal with difficult children. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, where are we at, gentlemen? Uh, seven. Okay. Therefore did they at all times hear the voices of messengers praising and glorifying Elohim from within the garden, or when they were sent by Elohim on an errand, or when they were going up to the Shemaim. For the Sheth and his children, by reason of their own purity, heard and saw those messengers. Then again, the garden was not far above them, but only some 15 spiritual cubits. Now one spiritual cubit answers to three cubits of man, altogether 45 cubits. Now... This is interesting because, you know, we've, we've talked about this before that the, um, that the, it seems like Eden, at least from this account, was 
over the ground. Like it wasn't like on the ground. Yet there's a there's a lot of these guys on YouTube that have like we've identified the Garden of Eden here, just right here, or something of the sort. And so there's um, some discrepancies with uh, what we have, um, with what people say, and you know what these kind of books say. Um, it would make sense that Eden was more of a spiritual uh, topper, like it was above the earth somewhere. Um, I would say I don't know. Any thoughts, anyone? Um, yeah, I, I thought about it before and talked about it, like the, it was floating in the air, or something like it's above the ground. Yeah. So, all right, let's continue on. Um, let's see. Ten. Ten. Thank you. Jeff and his children dwelt on the mountain below the garden. They sowed not, neither did they reap. They wrought no food for the body, not even wheat, but only offerings. They ate of the fruit of the trees, well flavored, that grew on the mountain where they dwelt. Then Sheth often fasted every 40 days, as all, did also his eldest children. For the family of Sheth smelled the smell of the trees in the garden when the wind blew that way. They were happy, innocent, without sudden fear. There was no jealousy, no evil action, no hatred among them. There was no animal passion. From their mouth among them went forth neither either foul words or curse, neither evil counsel nor fraud. For the men of that time never swore, but under hard circumstances. When the men must swear, they swore by the blood of Hebel, the just. But they constrained their children and their women every day in the cave to fast and pray and to worship the Most High Elohim. They blessed themselves in the body, on the body of their father, Adam, and anointed themselves with it. And they did so until the end of Sheth drew near. All right, I'm going to do one more chapter on this. And um, as we see the end of Sheth drawing near. Okay, this is chapter 12. Then Sheth, the just, called his son Enosh and Canaan, son of Enosh and Mahalel, and Canaan, son of Canaan, and said unto them, As my end is near, I wish to build a roof over the altar on which gifts are all offered. They hearkened to his commandment and went out, all of them, both old and young, and worked hard at it, and built a beautiful roof over the altar. And Sheth's thought in, doing, in so doing was that a blessing should come upon his children on the mountain, and that he should present an offering for them before his death. Then when the building of the roof was completed, he commanded them to make offerings. They worked diligently at these and brought them to Sheth, their father, who took them and offered them upon the altar and prayed Elohim to accept their offerings, to have mercy on the souls of his children and to keep them from the hand of Satan. Okay, there's some more prayers, right? There's some more stuff that, you know, as you guys get older and if you guys ever end up with spouses and you guys end up with kids, um, you will be praying that you know how to deal with the kids when they rise up. And you will also be praying that the hand of Satan is not able to take them. And that is a prayer that I pray all the time is that we are not, and you guys are not able to be sifted like, like flour in the hands of Satan. And this is a prayer that all of us should pray and that we should be beseeching our Elohim that he will not allow us to fall into the hands of the, the dark ones and the evil ones. And so um, let's continue on. Um, where are we at, Jake? We are on six. 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 Okay. And Elohim accepted his offering and sent his blessing upon him and his children. And then Elohim made a promise to Sheth, saying, At the end of the great five days and a half, concerning which I have made a promise to thee and thy, to thy father, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. And we know from, for, from John 1.14 that, that the word was made flesh, and that was where Messiah Yahushua came. And um, that, is, that is amazing that we hear this all the way back in the very beginning, things of this, this nature. Then Sheth and his children and his children's children met together and came down from the altar and went to the cave of treasures where they prayed and blessed themselves in it, the body of our father Adam, in the body of our father Adam, and anointed themselves with it. I don't know what to make of that exactly or exactly what they were doing when they were blessing themselves um, in the body of our father Adam. I think it was just kind of around. They just kept, uh, you know, father Adam. You know. Yeah, I, I hope it's not like a crazy thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it is. I, 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 they know who to praise. They know who, who to pray to. I don't think they're, they're doing anything crazy. And these, these guys were the forefathers of, of righteousness. Okay, eight. But Sheth abode in the cave of treasures a few days and then suffered. Sufferings unto death. Then Enosh, his firstborn, came to him with Canaan, his son, and Mahalo, Canaan's son, and Yared, the son of Mahalo, and Kanak, Yared's son, with their wives and children to receive a blessing from Sheth. Well, there's there's the whole lineup right there, right? There's yep. all the guys, even to Enoch, right? Isn't that amazing? All the way down to that. So um, you could see how far we are and how far the world is because we know that when Enoch's out there, he's, he's having to minister to the watchers. 
um, who are down off the mountain, who are down all around. Um, and then, you know, the world down below, you know, we're talking, you know, some, you know, 17, 1800 years. So when Cain left, uh, he and his wife, they all had kids and they had kids. Yeah, and, they had and kids. I think they're all defiled now with the angels, right? The Cain's kids? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure they probably are. I would imagine they are at something at this point. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of them, right? They, they've been reproducing like mad. Okay, 10. Then Sheth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Hevel the just, saying, I beg of you, my children, not to let one of you go down from this Kadesh and Pure Mountain. Make no fellowship with the children of Cain, the murderer and the sinner, who killed his brother. For ye know, O my children, that we flee from him and from all his sin with all our might because he killed his brother Hevel. After having said this, Sheth blessed Enosh, his firstborn son, and commanded him habitually to minister and purify purity before the body of our father Adam all the days of his life, then also to go at times to the altar which, which he, Sheth, had built. And he commanded him to feed his people in righteousness, in judgment, and purity all the days of his life. I find that interesting, right? Because the altar that he's talking about is the same one when Cain... Um, well, I mean, remember when, I don't, I guess that doesn't make any sense. Remember the altar that, that um, Hevel built mm -hmm. and threw it on? Now there's another altar that he built. So I don't know which altar this actually is. I was thinking that was the other one, but uh, I'm, I might be a little mixed up. Okay, 13. Then the limbs of Sheth were loosened. His hands and feet lost all power. His mouth became dumb and unable to speak, and he gave up the ghost and died the day after his 912th year on the 27th day of the month Abib. Okay, that month of Bib wouldn't be in there. This is yeah, I, think, I think it's the first of the year, right? The first month of the year? Yeah, that's the first of the year. Hanok, Enoch, being then 20 years old. Wow, Enoch's so 20 he, years he old. He's only like 45 years before you. It's like taken away. It's young Enoch. Yeah, this is young, young Enoch. Yeah, for right here. Well, how old was Enoch when he was taken away? He was 65, wasn't oh, he? No, 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 Okay, then they wound up the body of Sheth and embalmed him with sweet spices and laid him in the cave of treasures on the right side of our father Adam's body. And they mourned for him 40 days and they offered gifts for him and they, as they had done for our father Adam. After the death of Sheth, Enosh rose as the head, at the head of his people, whom he fed in righteousness and judgment as his father had commanded him. But by the time Enosh was 820 years old, Canaan had a large progeny for they married frequently being given to animal lusts until the land below the mountain was filled with them. All right. That is it, everybody. Um, anyone have any uh, final words on this? Um, I don't think so. Chef's dead. You know, yeah. our, our forefathers. Yeah, were, these are living a really, really long time. You know, they start burying them instead of just keeping the bodies around. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when that... Uh, it's just, that, a little, just a little odd, knowing that it, it, you it, keep bodies around in these kind of days. It is odd. It's very also strange, too, because um, if you don't drain the insides of people out, then they rot and they smell really, really bad. But I, I don't know if the, uh, you know, the, the frankincense and myrrh and stuff that they have on that... Uh, was able to deal with that or they you know i don't i don't know how that actually worked um other than uh i don't know i don't know there's a reason people to get buried is because they do not smell good when they die so i don't know how you stop that that's when old lazarus he, he popped out of there he, they, he's like that's why uh, his sister said he stinketh don't 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 let him out he's stinketh all right guys so everybody we thank you guys very very much our dogs are about to get crazy here uh, we love you guys we hope that you guys uh keep shabbat we will be there tomorrow for Shabbat live service, and we are out. All right, Hello. Shalom.